Welcome to Horror Franchise Wednesday. Let's talk about Underworld 3, Rise of the Lycans, the prequel to the first two Underworld movies. And this one has a different director. This time we got visual effects artist and production designer Patrick Totopoulos. And what this movie is essentially about is these two people fall in love, a vampire and a werewolf. And the dad of the vampire finds out and kills the daughter. And a war breaks out between the Lycans and the Bloods. They've been slaves to the vampires for a long time, and finally they have a leader who convinces them to finally fight back. Getting into the positives for Underworld 3 is the performances by Bill Nighy? Nighy? The, the guy from over a hundred movies. He's been in a lot of stuff, but he'll always be the guy in Shaun of the Dead to me. Uh, terrific actor. Liked him. And I liked also Michael Sheen, who plays Lucian. So I thought they were the standouts in this. And I like that they actually found someone who looks a lot like Kate Beckinsale to play Sonya because they established in part one that the reason why Celine was turned into a vampire in the first place was to replace his daughter that he killed. He makes her a vampire because she looks so much like his dead daughter that he killed hundreds of years ago. And so... I thought they did a great job hiring this actress, uh, Rona Mitra, whatever. I can't read my own handwriting, but she looks a lot like Kate Beckinsale, so I, that was great casting. Um, and this movie looks pretty good, just like the other ones. You know, big budget film, great production value, cinematography looks good. You know, some of the sets, and also I like the idea of the the spiked collar that the werewolves were wearing. It was a smart, like, plot device to explain why the werewolves have not been able to fight back. They are wearing these spike collars. I'm assuming it's made of, like, silver, something that, you know, is their weakness. And if they turn into a werewolf, the spikes on their collar is going to stab them. So I thought that was a clever little thing they threw in here. And I kind of liked seeing the return of... The one character, I think his name is Raze, the Lycan from part one. We get to see how he became a Lycan and how he became friends with Lucian. But what I don't like about this movie is the fact that it's a prequel that doesn't really expand the story from part one and two. We don't learn anything new here. It's telling the story that we've already been told in the last two movies in the it's like we already know what's going to happen by the end. We know Lucian's going to die in Underworld 1. We know that this woman he's falling in love with is going to get killed by her father. And, like, like we know all this shit already. They talked about it time and time again in the first two movies. They even showed flashbacks. So we already got to see and hear all the shit we're seeing now in this movie. It's just, it's a pointless prequel. And because this story takes place hundreds of years before Selena played by Kate Beckinsale, becomes a vampire. We don't actually get to see Kate Beckinsale in this movie at all until the very last 10 seconds when they just show footage from the beginning of part one, trying to, like, tie this movie into the first movie. And this movie doesn't do a good job developing a relationship between Sonya and Lucian. The movie just starts and they're already grown-ups fucking each other in secret, and we already know how their relationship's going to end, tragically. This one also just has the least amount of action of the three movies so far, and this one is edited in that choppy style I don't like. This has to be a different editor from part one and two. This one's a lot more choppy, just cut, cut, cut to different angles. I don't like that style. And one nitpick I would have is the contacts this time around used for the vampires just looked so much like contacts. It was just so fake. It was, his eyes were so extra blue this time around. I don't remember his eyes looking like this in part one or two. Uh, Victor, like their eyes have never been this bright blue and it just made him have this like permanent expression of like shock. Like he was bewildered the whole movie. Oh, his eyes were just so wide. Like he was just constantly surprised. And one thing that kind of bugged me was that this wasn't even an accurate prequel. Like we already established how their love ended in part one. We saw a flashback. We saw exactly how she died and what the room looked like and who was there. The way it plays out in this movie is almost completely different. 
She's never on fire. She just turns into ashes. In the first one, we see that she is lit on fire from the sun, and her dad is there witnessing it, and there's all these other soldiers there, and then he turns into a werewolf right away, breaks the chains, and jumps out the window, but it doesn't play out exactly like that in this one. So the fact that they weren't even accurate to the first movie just kind of bugged me. So final thoughts, this is just a superfluous prequel that doesn't expand the story of the first two, but it's still entertaining enough to watch. It has a terrific production value, some solid acting, but just not enough action sequences. It doesn't ever really make me get on board with their relationship. So when it comes to Underworld Rise of the Lycans, I'll give it 3 out of 5. So those are my quick thoughts on Underworld Rise of the Lycans. What are your thoughts on this prequel? Uh, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about 5 seconds. And remember, it's all opinion. You don't need to get barfered about it. <laughs>